two of the main things I'm trying to like maximize in my mad dash to watch all the things on my film star queue are the silent films and the Japanese films because I've been just I love silent films and I've been meaning to watch Japanese films for like my whole life so I uh tonight watched two Japanese silent films ah um both of which had sort of similar thematics the first one is a Mikio Naruse film called Apart From You. It's from 1933. Silent films in Japan went out much longer than they did in America. Obviously, we had some late era silence from Chaplin, but pretty much, you know, by 1930, it was all talkies in America. But the silence lasted much longer in Japan for several reasons. So you have these early 30s silent films. Basically, it follows a woman um, named Kiku, who is a geisha who has a teenage son who's beginning to realize that his mother is a geisha and he's ashamed of her profession. So he is beginning to be a truant from school and um, um, dallying in juvenile delinquency. It's not good. Um, meanwhile, Kiku has a uh, young colleague named uh, Tirugi... Tir hmm. Turugiku, who is um, being forced basically to be a geisha because her father is an alcoholic and um, this is the only way her family has any money and she has two young siblings and so she's a geisha in order to support her younger brother and sister basically. Um, and her and Kiku are friends and so Kiku tries to get her friend to help talk to her son about like hey don't be a dick basically and the basically it's an hour of um these two women sort of you see why they are in where they're at why they do this job that they do and the um way in which they have to support their families through this means and they're going to support each other as they're supporting their families and um Eventually, obviously, the son is going to realize that he needs to not be a dick to his mom and that she's doing what she's doing for him. Uh, and it's it's got a, a bittersweet ending, as you would expect from such a film. Um, one thing I'm noticing, and I don't know, I should have known this, um, in a lot of these Japanese films is how much emphasis there is on these very complex female characters. I'm really enjoying um the exploration of, of Japanese womanhood that I'm watching in these films. Um, it's lovely. So, uh, segue to the next film I watched, which is from also from 1933. It's directed by Hiroshi Shimizu from a story by Toma Kat, Kata, mm, Kitayabayashi, that was hard to say, um, called Japanese Girls at the Harbor. And, indeed, it stars two Japanese girls, um, named Sunako and Dora and they are at the beginning of the film young squirrel girls in Yokohama at the harbor. Um, they meet a suave young boy named Henry who um, sweeps both the girls off their feet. Uh, Sunaku is much more aggressive. Dora is much more um, sort of traditional and conservative in her feelings and so obviously Sanaku and um Henry you know take off together and then uh she discovers that he's also uh seeing an older woman named Yoko not good we know how that's gonna end um in a fit of jealousy she shoots Yoko spoiler Yoko does not die um, and then you, it cuts to many years later and she is now living in the city. She is a prostitute. She's living in, you know, working in gin bars. She's like, you know, once you shoot somebody, it all, it's all downhill from there. Um, and she's, you know, relatively happy, mostly forcing herself to be happy when one day she runs into Henry, who at this point is now married to Dora. Dora, being the sweet girl she is, wants to try to help her friend and pull her out of the gutter. Um, unfortunately, this causes Henry to re, re, um, 
remember the way he felt and that causes guilt. More happens. There's also a sort of beatnik-y painter guy wearing a beret, uh, which was delightful. And this is a moral tale, so you're going to have the innocent, the downfall, and then the redemption of the woman, of Sanako, um, in a much uh, better way than some of these sort of, uh, actually, in a more sort of pre-code way than in these, um, not that they had the production code in Japan, but, you know, in, in America, you could have um, this these sort of redemptions at this point in then you'd have the 40s when you had the production code and you had to have the downfall of the woman and she would have to die. Um, in her redemption would have to include her death, you know what I mean? And in this, she gets redemption and it's a little sad, but there's no death. And you think that most people are probably going to go off and have a better life, maybe. Um, should she have to seek redemption for, you know, what she's done? Quotes on there. I don't know. That's for you to decide. Um, is she going to seek a better life? Is her life something that's truly awful? Who knows? That's that's for you to decide as a viewer um, and for Sunako to decide as a person. It uh, reminded me a bit of uh, Von Sternberg's The Docks of New York in its sort of great, uh, um, CD dock life. Um Munderbelly kind of way, which was lovely. And it had a gorgeous score from Donald Sozin. He's one of the best um, contemporary scorers of silent cinema. I've seen him play live so many times, and it's always thrilling. And um, I didn't know it was a new score from him until I got to the end and it said it was. And I was like, no wonder I liked this music so much. Um, he's great. So anytime you can see him and or um, get watch a film that he scored, you're, you're in for a treat. So these films are beautiful. Um, I think Apart From You is, they're both on Film Shark right now, Apart From You is part of the Eclipse series. Um, I think the silent Nerus. And then um, Japanese Girl Girls at the Harbor is part of like Travels with Shimizu or something like that. They're both Eclipse series. You can get them on disc if you need to. Um, and there's several more of these Shimizu films. They all sound amazing. I might try to watch them too. I don't know. There's, uh, I can't decide what to focus on. There's too much. It's a problem. Um, we'll see what happens. Keep watching movies. Japanese cinema is really good. I should have watched it sooner. I regret so much.